स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया In this lecture, we will discuss a very important class of functions called Mobius transformations. Mobius transformations are uh, special rational functions uh, which naturally occur in the study of various domains in complex analysis. But before we get into the study of Mobius transformations, it will be useful to study the extended complex plane. Uh, the extended complex plane is nothing but the complex plane with one point attached to it. If you have seen a course on topology, it is just the one point compactification of the complex plane. Let me begin by defining what an extended complex plane is and we will give a concrete description of, of what that is. So, the extended complex plane. We define the extended complex plane and uh, denote it by C hat. To be the set C hat, which is given by C union, the point at infinity. The extended complex plane is uh, very important, especially in the study of a class of functions which, uh, which diverge away to infinity at isolated points. They are the right setting to study uh, such functions and uh, we can give a concrete description of the extended complex plane by looking at the sphere in R3. So, recall that the sphere in R3 is given by it's just the higher dimensional log of the unit circle. This is the set of all, so let us denote it by S2. This is the set of all x1, x2, x3. This is that x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square is equal to 1. This is the equator which is at the back and let me just identify this with the uh, x y plane here. So, this is the x y plane and any point here. So, this x y plane can be identified with the complex plane and this is the unit sphere, unit sphere with the origin here. Let us get hold of a distinguished point, let us call this point P which is the point 0, 0, 001, which is at the uh, at the top of the unit sphere. And uh, for a given point Z in the complex plane, let me use another color, let us join this point Z with the point P. And the point will, so given Z here, there is a point P of Z on the unit sphere. So, let us see, uh, let us capture all that we just said. Mm, let z be equal to x y 0 be a point on the x y plane or the complex plane. Be a point, let me just write for simplicity, the point, a point in C. It is the complex plane is being identified over there. As of now, I am just considering this as a set. And what is going to be a line which joins Z and P? Then the line joining Z and P is given by 1 minus T times Z plus T times P, where T belongs to all real numbers. This is the line which joins Z and P and the 
thing we are interested in is the point at which this line meets the unit sphere and that's given by a very simple equation which is basically the following it's going to be 1 minus t uh, the so this is in coordinates this is going to be 1 minus t times x 1 minus t times y and t times 1 which is this is going to be the set of all points this l is going to be the set of all points where t is in we are interested in the point where it uh, touches our unit sphere which is given by this equation x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square is equal to 1 which can be written more com uh, compactly in the in this manner plus t square is equal to 1 minus t square of course one when t is equal to 1 we are at the point p and we are not interested in that well hence for t not equal to 1 we have mod z square is equal to 1 minus 1 plus t by 1 minus t and you can get hold of t from here which gives t is equal to mod z square minus 1 by mod z square plus 1. So, this is precisely the point uh, the, the parameter t at which it touches the unit sphere. So, hence L meets S2 at 1 minus t times x which is going to be 2 times x by mod z square plus 1, 2 times y by mod z square plus 1 and mod z square minus 1 by mod z square plus 1. So, this is precisely the point where it touches the unit sphere. So, let us define a map. at this. Define a map phi from C into S2 given by P of Z is equal to 2 times the real part of Z by mod Z square plus 1, 2 times the imaginary part of Z by mod Z square plus 1 and mod z square minus 1 by mod z square plus 1. If you notice this map uh, takes every point outside the unit circle onto the upper hemisphere, any point inside is taken into the any point here will be mapped this is the point say z prime the map p of z prime will be on the lower hemisphere and any point on the unit circle will be mapped to the same point you can actually uh, construct the explicit inverse and see that phi is going to be an injective map from c to s2 or rather let me define the map by defining p of infinity to be equal to p we have a bijection from c hat which is the extended complex plane which is the uh, set c with the extra point infinity attached this is a bijection from c hat to s2 this is a concrete description of uh, the extended complex plane. This map phi has a name, it is called the stereographic projection. The, uh, the, the identification is quite important, phi is called the stereographic projection. Using the stereographic projection, we will also define a metric on c hat. Given two points z and z prime in c hat, we will define the distance, stereographic distance from z to z prime to be the uh, 
Euclidean distance from phi of z to phi of z prime. Remember that phi of z and phi of z prime are two points in R3 which lie on the unit circle uh, or unit sphere. We will define the stereographic distance from z to z prime to be exactly the Euclidean distance of phi of z to phi of z prime. Uh, let me not spend too much time deriving the expression. I will just write down the expression for you. We define a distance on phi hat as follows. Distance d of z comma z prime is equal to the distance of p of z to p of z prime in S2 which is contained in R3. So, this distance is the Euclidean distance. Let me just write it here. And the ex explicit expression is just going to be the following. This is going to be equal to mod of z minus z prime by 1 plus mod z square into 1 plus mod z prime square to the power 1 by 2. Now, this is the case when both z and z prime are not infinity, the point at infinity. If one of them is say the point at infinity, then d of z z prime is just going to be equal to, oh, I missed a 2 here. So, the d of z z prime is just going to be equal to 2 by 1 plus mod z square. So, notice that uh, with, with, uh, with respect to uh, this metric, the neighborhoods of the point at infinity will just turn out to be the uh, complement of balls in the complex plane. So that is the topology you get on the one point compactification, right? The neighborhood around infinity is going to be the same. So, this is going, this is a good description to keep in mind of the extended complex plane. So, we are now in a setting to define what Mobius transformations are. Mobius transformations, as I had said earlier, are special classes, special class of functions uh, which which naturally occur at uh, various stages in complex analysis. The definition is quite straightforward. Uh, a map S of Z given by AZ plus B by CZ plus D. So, it is the fraction of two linear polynomials. Such a map is called, so for ABCD complex numbers. Such a map is called a Mobius transformation if AD minus BC is not equal to 0. Let us look at a few examples. The identity map is uh, uh, the first example of a Mobius transformation. Is a Mobius transformation. In this case, A is equal to 1, D is equal to 1, B and C are 0. Okay, another example would be the map S of Z given by Z minus i by Z plus i. In this case, B is minus 1, A, C and uh, b is minus i and a and c are 1, d is equal to i. So, notice that uh, s of z in the second case here, it is holomorphic away from minus i. It, because it is a rational function, the function is holomorphic away from the zeros of the denominator. So, maybe uh, on, a, on a more general note, uh, Mobius transformation is holomorphic Mobius transformation specifically say s of z equal to a z plus b by c z plus d is holomorphic at points at c minus minus of d by c. The singleton minus of d by c which is the uh, 0 of Cz plus D is precisely the point which is to be thrown out. Everywhere else our given function is going to be holomorphic by the quotient rule. 
that's one observation to keep in mind. So, consider now the following Mobius transformation. Consider as uh, maybe T of Z given by dz minus b by minus of cz plus a. Such a map is going to satisfy the following condition. At points where it, can, it makes sense, we can say that T composed with S is going to be equal to identity. So, this is going to be defined uh, where? Where it is going to be defined at the points where z is not equal to minus of d by a because that is the expression here, that is the place where it is defined. And one more point has to be thrown out which is the pre-image of my, uh, a by c. So, these are the two points where we will have to worry about, but we will come to that in a minute. The idea is that uh, the first thing to note is that Mobius transformations can be composed, we will get back another Mobius transformation. So, another observation observe that Mobius transformations wherever it can be composed can be composed to obtain another Mobius transformation. So, from a very uh, abstract group theoretic point of view, we are in a good setup. The Mobius transformations they form a group. We in fact explicitly gave what would be an inverse of a given Mobius transformation. M Mobius transformations form a group. But then we were worrying about the points minus of uh, d by a and the and the point where the denominator of S inverse vanishes. So, in order to uh, get ourselves in a better situation, let us define the map S as a map on the extended complex plane rather than on the complex plane. We shall consider a Mobius transformation to be defined on C hat rather than on C by defining we were having one point left out right for S of Z equal to A Z plus B by C Z plus D s of minus of d by c, we will define it to be the point at infinity, which we have attached to the extended uh, to the complex plane to obtain the extended complex plane. So, notice that this uh, infinity, the symbol infinity is being uh, used because in some sense it coincides with our notion of infinity, which we have uh, developed in a real analysis course. So, here minus of d by c is now going to be sent to the point at infinity and where will the point at infinity be sent to? It should be sent to the point where we will have a singularity for s inverse. So, the point here would be at a by c. This infinity is going to be defined to be a by c. Then it is a good exercise for you to sit down and check s is a bijection we have already done all the hard work. I, I have in fact given you an explicit inverse on c hat. So, it is a map from c hat to c hat which is a bijection. Okay, Let us look at a few more examples. Uh, a very important uh, group of Mobius transformations are the translations. So, another very important Mobius transformation is the translation. S of Z is given by Z plus B for B in C. Such translations, such Mobius transformations are called translations. 
Another group of uh, Mobius transformations of great interest is dilations. S of z is equal to a times z for a not equal to 0. How about the third one? Third one is the inverse. So, notice that dilations are examples of dilations are things which we have already considered. For uh, a equal to elements of the, the type e to the power i theta, uh, we have already seen that s uh, will turn out to be isometries of uh, the complex plane which fixes the origin, right? We have already seen that. So, basically a rotation, they will turn out to be rotations. Dilations are more general for any a not equal to 0, we can talk about s of z is equal to z, that is going to be a Mobius transformation by the way. And the third one which uh, is of interest is the inversions, inversion rather, s of z given by 1 by z. So, notice that when we are looking at uh, Mobius transformations of the type a z plus b by c z plus d. If c is equal to 0, then the denominator does not have a root and in such a scenario s infinity is defined to be infinity itself. So, this is something which should be kept in mind. When c is equal to 0, then s of infinity is equal to infinity. And that is how we will extend it in that case to the map on uh, the complex plane, extended complex plane. Right, so we have seen a few examples here and uh, these examples were not picked arbitrarily. The following proposition tells us that these examples are very special in the sense that every Mobius transformation can be written as uh, a composition of a rotation, a translation uh, and an inversion. Not necessarily all of them appearing in the composition, nevertheless any uh, Mobius transformation can be written in this manner. Let me write down the statement for you. Any Mobius transformation can be written as a composition of translations, rotations, sorry, dilations. Rotations are just a very special subcategory of dilations. Dilations and inversion. Not all of them necessarily appearing. For example, if you take a, a dilation, it is already a dilation. We do not need a translation and inver inversion now to get it as a composition of uh, these. So, that is the statement of the proposition. Let us give a proof. The proof is quite straightforward. It is just getting hold of the, uh, the right uh, translations and dilations to describe our uh, Mobius transformation. Suppose our S of Z is of the type AZ plus B by CZ plus D. Uh, two, two cases can happen if c is equal to 0, then our s of z is going to be uh, well, I, we could have just considered a z plus b, but let us anyway face, uh, stick to what we have just taken. This is going to be a, z, a by d times z plus b by d, and this is going to be equal to s1 composed with s2 of z where S2 of Z is first the dilation by A by D and S1 of Z is a translation, that is translation by B by D. So, if you notice, we have a dilation and a translation whose composition will give us our given Mobius transformation when C is equal to 0. The more difficult case or rather more uh, complicated case is when c is not equal to 0. In the case when c is not equal to 0, we will need more Mobius transformations, more of these elementary Mobius transformations 
so if c is not equal to 0 i'll just leave it to you to check that uh, let me just write that in bracket check that s is equal to s4 composed with s3 composed with s2 composed with s1 where s1 of z is translation s2 of z is the inversion s3 of z is a dilation of the type dc minus ad by c square times z and finally s4 of z is another translation. So, if you sit down and do the computations you will see that uh, s4 composed with s3 composed with s2 composed with s1 will turn out to be our given Mobius transformation. Uh, how we can write a given Mobius transformation as a composition of translations, dilations and inversion. Let us try to understand Mobius transformations a bit better and in order to do that it is quite useful to look into the fixed points of our given Mobius transformation. So, that, that will be our next goal studying the fixed points of uh, given Mobius transformation and concluding things from that. So, let us uh, start with a uh, Mobius transformation let s of z be equal to a z plus b by c z plus d. Let us look at a few of the examples we had considered before we actually do this. The first one was the identity map. The identity map had the property that every point is a fixed point. But let us look at the translation, the translation here what will be a fixed point of this translation z plus b being equal to z is what matters for b not equal to 0 when b is equal to 0 it is again the identity map and b is not equal to 0 z plus b is not equal to z for any of the points on the complex plane however the point at infinity is a fixed point okay how about s of z is equal to a z now if a is equal to 1 this is the identity map when a is not equal to 1 this is going to be uh, z is going to be a fixed point if z is equal to 0 and we also know that the point at infinity is a fixed point here. So, in this case the fixed points will turn out to be 0 and the point at infinity and how about here, here z will turn out to be equal to 1 by z which implies that z is equal to plus or minus 1. In any case in all these cases we will notice that uh, we are ending up with a quadratic polynomial and that is going to be the case with uh, a general Mobius transformation as well. So, if let s of z be equal to a z plus b by c z plus d then z is a fixed point implies that a z plus b is equal to z times c z plus d and we end up with a quadratic polynomial of the type t c times z square plus d minus a times z minus b is equal to 0. And we know that such a polynomial will have a maximum of 2 distinct roots. Hence, if s is not the identity then s can have a maximum of two fixed points. So, in particular if s has three fixed points it is supposed to be the identity map. So, uh, there are there are a few special cases which one has to consider here when c is equal to 0, when d is equal to a is equal to 1, but let me leave it to you to sit down and check in all these cases it turns out that by considering the map explicitly by looking at for example, when c is equal to 0 the map is just going to be equal to a by d times z plus b by d and in that case we know exactly what the fixed point will be. The one of them one point will certainly be the point at infinity and the second point can be obtained by looking at a by d times z plus b by d is equal to z and solving for it. That will be one 
that will be, be a linear equation and therefore there will be one root. So there will be a maximum of two fixed points. So the cases where these things vanish is of uh, interest when c is equal to 0 and d is equal to a again you, you should go back to how s of z looks like this is going to again get satisfied. The fact that s can have a maximum of two fixed points. This observation has far reaching implications because uh, if you take three points a, b, c. So let a, b, c be distinct points and uh, alpha, beta and gamma be such that <coughs> s of a is equal to alpha, s of b is equal to beta and s of c is equal to gamma. Let us now take some other uh, Mobius transformations, Mobius transformation which does exactly the same. Let T be another Mobius transformation. Such that T of A is equal to alpha. T of B is equal to beta. <coughs> and t of c is equal to that. Then what, what do we know about t inverse composed with s? We know that this is a Mobius transformation because composition of Mobius t inverse is a Mobius transformation. We know the explicit uh, formula once we know what t is. And then t inverse composed with s is also going to be a Mobius transformation. So t inverse of s is a Mobius transformation. which does a little more than ordinary. It fixes three distinct points A, B, C in the complex plane, actually in C hat. So I could have taken three distinct points in C hat. So this tells us that the uh, action of a Mobius transformation on three points completely tells us what that Mobius transformation is. There cannot be another Mobius transformation which acts similarly on three distinct points. So uh, we can now ask, given three distinct points, can we get hold of some nice Mobius transformations which map it to points of interest to us? And the answer is yes. We will now try to construct Mobius transformations which map three given distinct points A, B, C to the points 0, 1 and infinity in C hat. Let us do that. Let A, B, C be points in C hat be distinct. Then the following cases happen. If A, B, C belong to C, none of these points are the the point at infinity, let us define s of z to be equal to z minus a, which will send the point to uh, point a to 0. Now, this is going to send the point b to 1, and this is going to send the point c to infinity, and which now is maintaining the fact that b is sent to 1. So, if you define s of z to be this, notice that b minus a and b minus c are complex numbers. By multiplying it by the complex number, you are going to get hold of a Mobius transformation here. Check that then s of a is equal to 0, s of b is equal to 1 and s of c is equal to infinity. So, we can explicitly get hold of a Mobius transformation which maps these three points to 0, 1 and infinity. This can be arranged when one of them is infinity as well. So, if A is equal to infinity and let us see what happens. Then define our S of Z in the following manner. We want A to be sent to infinity. C should be sent to, sorry, A should be sent to 0, C should be sent to infinity and B should be sent to 
one. So check that this is a particular this particular Mobius transformation satisfies all our requirements. Satisfies s of infinity is zero, s of b is equal to one, and s of c is the point at infinity. Now next is the case when b is infinity. There it's quite straightforward because b is going to get mapped to one. This is just going to be z minus a by z minus c. So notice that c is getting mapped to infinity here, a is getting mapped to 0 and b, uh, b which is the point at infinity is getting mapped to 1. And finally, if c is the point at infinity, what will be the case here? We want infinity to be mapped to infinity, right? And uh, that is just going to be the case when it is going to be a linear polynomial. There is nothing in the quotient. The quotient is going to be a constant. And what more do we want? We want a to be mapped to 0 and b to be mapped to 1. So, this is precisely going to be the uh, Mobius transformation which does this, does the trick. So, let me write down a proposition which we have just proven. Given distinct points a, b, c in c hat, their x is uh, unique that we have already shown, unique Mobius transformation such that s of a is equal to 0, s of b is equal to 1 and s of c is equal to infinity. We have taken care of all the possibilities as well, right? a, b or c, one of the three could be, uh, yeah, they are distinct points. One of the three could be infinity, the point at infinity and still we have got hold of Mobius transformation which manages this. So we have proved this proposition. In fact, we have proved a little more, we have proved the following corollary. Given uh, distinct points a, b, c in uh, c hat and distinct points alpha, beta and gamma in c hat, there exists a unique Mobius transformation which maps a to alpha, b to gamma and c to b to beta and c to gamma such that okay what their x is uh, unique mobius transformation such that s of a is equal to alpha s of b is equal to beta and s of c is equal to gamma the proof here is quite straightforward because we have explicitly constructed uh, Mobius transformations which can map a, b, c to 0, 1 and infinity in that order and similarly alpha, beta, gamma to 0, 1 and infinity in that order. We just uh, compose S1 and S2 inverse. Let me just write that down whatever I just said. Let S1 be uh, Mobius transformation such that s1 of a is equal to 0, s1 of b is equal to 1 and s1 of c is equal to the point at infinity. Similarly, we know the existence of one such s1 from the previous proposition. Similarly, s2 be uh, Mobius transformation such that s2 of alpha is equal to 0 s2 of beta is equal to 1 and s2 of gamma is equal to infinity. Then s2 inverse composed with s1 t defined in this manner maps a, b, c to respectively alpha, beta, gamma. We are done. 
So, not only do we know that action on A, B, C will, uh, will determine the Mobius transformation, but we also know that given A, B, C and uh, alpha, beta, gamma, we have a Mobius transformation which maps A to alpha, B to beta and C to gamma. Let us conclude this lecture by proving some uh, a very nice property of Mobius transformation namely that it maps circles to circles. So, when I say circles here I mean the generalized circle. So, let me rephrase it Mobius transformations are special in the sense that they map generalized circles to generalized circles. Generalized circles are the uh, circles which could either represent the circle or the straight line. It was already discussed in one of the problem sessions. Let me just recall it for you nevertheless. Recall that uh, generalized circle in the complex plane is a set of points given by the absolute value of z minus w1 by z minus w2 is equal to lambda where lambda is a positive integer. We have seen that such uh, a set will either turn out to be a circle or a straight line in the complex plane. So, uh, one another way to think about the the generalized circle is in the in the form of circles in the in the uh, extended complex plane. In the extended complex plane, one could think of lines as circles with center at infinity. These are uh, the right generalized setting which we would be considering while uh, we study the image of such objects under Mobius transformations. So the first proposition which uh, I would like to prove here is the following. Let S be uh, Mobius transformation. Then S always maps the real line with the point at infinity to a generalized circle. This is forced. Then S maps the set R union infinity to a generalized circle. Let us prove this statement. What do we want? We want to show that we want to uh, study the set of all points W in S of R union infinity. That means S inverse of W belongs to R. We want to study all those points. Uh, in that case, let us give an expression for S inverse. Let S inverse of Z be given by Az plus B by Cz plus B. We want to understand when S of W, S inverse of W belongs to the real line. So, S inverse of W belongs to R. Uh, S inverse of W will be the point at infinity precisely when it is of the type A by C. So, that I will keep aside. We will study the case when S inverse of W Z is in the real line. But this is if and only if from our first week's lectures, this is the case, right? The conjugate is the same as the given complex number itself. So, that means I E. Notice that we are going to do an if and only if uh, statement here, which you should uh, keep in mind because this is if and only if A B A W plus B by C W plus D is equal to A bar W bar plus D bar by C bar W bar plus D bar. Right. Let us just quickly write this down in a different manner. This is just the same as A C bar 
minus a bar c times w plus a d bar minus b bar c times w oh, this is uh, mod w square by the way and the second because there is a w w bar that will come up and then there is a term which will feature w bar which is going to be equal to b c bar minus a bar d times w bar and finally we will have b d bar minus b bar d this is equal to zero now two cases can happen what are the two cases one is when a c bar is a real number a c bar is equal to a bar c notice that both are conjugates if a c bar is equal to a bar c what will be the expression the expression will be some alpha times w minus alpha bar times w bar is equal to b bar d minus b d bar or rather uh, let me write that down in that manner because it's important to have that to the right and this is going to be what is going to be z minus z bar that's going to be 2i times the imaginary part right so this is going to be 2i times the imaginary part of alpha times w okay what is alpha here alpha is the right thing that you would have guessed this is a d bar minus b bar c and that is going to be equal to 2i into imaginary part of b bar d. These cancel off and that tells us that imaginary part of alpha times w is a constant in R which is the equation of a straight line. So, when a c bar is equal to a bar c, it is mapped to a straight line. w will happen to be in uh, the straight line given by imaginary part of alpha w bar alpha w is equal to c. All right, that is the case when easier case when a c bar is equal to a bar c. So, if a c bar is not equal to a bar c, then you can divide it by that uh, number to get then if and only if again all these cases so here when a c bar is equal to a bar c we are already done we are mapping it to a generalized then mod w square i will just quickly write it in this manner alpha w plus alpha bar w bar plus gamma is equal to 0 where alpha is just equal to a d bar minus b bar c by um, a c bar minus a bar c. I guess I have got the signs right, but this is precisely what alpha will be and gamma is going to be equal to b bar b d bar minus b bar d by a c bar minus a bar c. The expression here can be very easily rewritten as mod of w minus alpha the whole square is equal to gamma minus gamma will come up here. This is going to be equal to mod alpha square minus gamma. I will leave it for you to check that this is going to be greater than 0. The conditions of the Mobius transformation will ensure that this is uh, greater than 0 and we can look at the square root to get hold of a expression for a generalized circle, uh, in fact a circle here. And that is going to be a very important observation because we are going to prove that with the following theorem. A Mobius transformation. maps generalized circles to generalized circles.
So the proof is actually quite straightforward. We pick three distinct points on the given generalized circle. So pick three distinct points A, B, C on the given generalized circle. And suppose uh, S is a Mobius transformation. Now let us uh, look at the image of A, B, C under S and alpha B equal to S of A, beta B equal to S of B and gamma B equal to S of C. And we know that there exist Mobius transformations which send A, B, C to 0, 1 and alpha, beta, gamma also to 0, 1. Let S1 and S2 be Mobius transformations such that S1 of A is equal to 0 which is the same as S2 of alpha, S1 of B is equal to 1 which is the same as S2 of beta and S1 of C is the point at infinity which is the same as S3 of beta and we have already seen that S is now forced to be equal to S2 inverse composed with S1. This is going to be a Mobius transformation and by uniqueness this is going to be the case. The Mobius transformations coincide. Now the good thing about S1 and S2 here is that from the previous uh, computations S1 maps a generalized circle containing A, B, C to R union infinity and the content of the previous proposition tells us that S2 maps R union infinity to a generalized circle. And by the previous proposition, S2 inverse maps R union infinity to a generalized circle. And we are done. So basically, a Mobius transformation always maps generalized circles to generalized circles. Okay, let me stop here.